In today's market, you can actually get a PC build for $1,200 that will give you excellent performance for everything, whether it's content creation, streaming, or gaming at 440p and also at 4K resolution, which was actually unheard of a couple months ago. Now I will give you two different systems and explain to you what each of these systems are able to do in case you are a beginner to PCs, so don't worry if you have no knowledge because I will try my best to make everything as simple as possible and also show you the estimated performance for different tasks. You will have the links to this PC build in the video description. That being said, let's start. So, for the CPU we have the i5-12600K, this one is from the last generation of Intel CPUs because right now you can get the i5-13600K, but anyway the 12600K is a great processor that can do it all and trust me guys, you will have no issues whether you wanna do gaming or content creation. Also the price is really decent at around $200. Then for the CPU cooler we have the Thermal Ride Assassin X 120 CPU cooler, this one is only $20 and it's going to be enough for our i5 and if you feel like you want more you can always go with a $40 CPU cooler that's a bit bigger and you will have that alternative in the description in case you want some better temps. Then for the motherboard we have the MSI Pro C690-A Wi-Fi DDR4 motherboard. This one is a bit pricey but honestly it will give you so much room for future SSDs which will be needed if you're a content creator or if you need a ton of storage down the line. You also get Wi-Fi which is great. Overall, a really nice motherboard for the price. Then for the memory kit, we have the Team Group T-Create Expert, 32 gigs of RAM. This is 2x16 of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. CL16 memory going for just 49 bucks. Honestly, 32 gigs of RAM at this price point is a total steal, and the market for RAM and storage has been really cheap lately, so we have to appreciate that. Now for gaming, 16 gigs would be more than enough, but if you also want to do content creation and streaming, and that's why I chose it instead of 16 gigs. Then for the storage we have the MSI M450 1TB of Gen 4 SSD going for just 38 bucks. Now you can save a couple bucks by going with Gen 3 SSD but honestly you will be saving no more than $10 so in my opinion the cheaper side of the Gen 4 is the way to go at the moment. Now for the graphics card we have the MSI Ventus GeForce RTX 4070. Now before you say anything let me explain why I chose this graphics card over AMD. With the 4070 you get a much better encoder for content creators. On top of that you get a graphics card that's really power efficient so you're gonna be saving money on your electricity bill which in my opinion is important because this is an all around PC and not just for gaming. Which by the way for gaming the RTX 4070 is excellent for 1440p and you can also play at 4K depending on the title and depending on the settings, but it's definitely more than possible. So if you want a 4K monitor or you want a 4040p and you want to achieve really high FPS in any title, basically the 4070 is actually a really nice option. Yes, it doesn't have the best price, but if we talk about all around GPUs, the 4070 is up there. You also get DLSS 3.0 or frame generation, which is a nice to have over an AMD graphics card that's around this price point. Anyway, if you want cheaper and better gaming performance, let's say you don't really mind about content creation and all of that stuff, then going with AMD is a great option, but I will talk about that in a second. But anyway, on a 13 game average at 1440p, the RTX 4070 achieved 126 FPS on average, which like I said before is really high FPS and let me tell you for games like Fortnite, Valorant and CSGO you will be able to achieve more than 240 FPS on pro settings so don't worry about those type of games and then at 4k the same 13 game average achieved almost a 70 FPS on average mark which is really good for 4k resolution and once again for those esports titles that I mentioned before at 4k you will be able to achieve even more than 144 FPS so if you want a high refresh rate 4k monitor feel free to buy one. Then for the case we have the DIY PC ARGB ATX Tower case. I think this one is absolutely beautiful, it has great airflow and the price is decent. You get 3 pre-installed fans on the front and I've also added one on the back for just $8 in the Arctic P12. This one is non-RGB so if you want another RGB fan on the back you will be spending a bit of extra money. And last but not least, the power supply. For the power supply, I picked the Thermal Take Smart BX1 750 80 plus bronze power supply. This is CT rated, not going to be the best quality, but I'm also not concerned. I think it will be enough for $80. However, 
If you have an extra 20, I would upgrade this power supply to another one from Corsair that's just $99 and it's going to give you more safety and it's also more efficient because it's 80 plus gold. Now the total price is $1216 and I do not recommend you downgrading anything unless you know what you're downgrading. For example, yes, you can go with 16 gigs of RAM, but I wouldn't recommend it since you're actually not saving a ton of money. And for $1,236, you're gonna get the same PC with a better power supply, which is what I recommend. But if you don't want to spend $1,230, then it's just fine to go with the other power supply. Now, like I said before, let's say you want a gaming PC and you wanna save some money because your budget is just below 1200 then I do recommend you going with the RX 6800 XT. This one has about the same rasterized performance as the RTX 4070 and you get more VRAM with 16 gigs of VRAM instead of 12 gigs on the 4070 and it's also cheaper. So really good graphics card if you're thinking of just gaming. Now it's not going to be useless for content creation, I think it's going to be just fine for most people but it's not going to be as good as the RTX 4070 and it has a lower level of ray tracing and on top of that you are not getting DLSS 3.0 here. Now the total price for the PC with the AMD GPU is going to be $1165 and it has some changes on the power supply and case because it's a different graphics card and we need more wattage and also a different size for the case. That's another point, you will be spending more on your electricity bill. Now maybe you don't care about this but some people do so I just had to throw it out there. In conclusion, if you want an all-around PC that can do it all, and I'm talking about any task, I would recommend you going with the one with the 4070. However, if you want to spend from 50 to 70 dollars less, you can go with the 6800 XT and get around the same performance for less money. Now, if you don't want to build it yourself, let's say you don't have the time, or maybe you just don't want to do it yourself, which is completely fine, you can go with the Probit PC. Actually, right now, the market for Probit PCs is actually great. There haven't been so many deals like right now for Probit PCs, so I do recommend you checking my video about the insane discounts for Probit PCs in the top right of the screen. And there's one PC where you save $850 because of the discount. That's how insane it is. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I will try to reply as fast as possible. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the support and I will see you on the next one.